All right, in our previous video about client data review, I showed you how to get to this point, and now we're going to talk about actually going through the review. So first things first, you can customize what you're reviewing. So with a certain client, if they, for example, don't have inventory, you can come in here and choose Customize Cleanup Tasks and uncheck all of inventory so that it comes off here. Okay, so if I do that and I save it, uh, I can always come back and return it on if they decide to have inventory later in the future. Okay, so you can customize it there. Uh, so we're just going to hop through each of these. Uh, first things first, we're going to troubleshoot the account balances. So first thing, I'm going to click on this guy here. It gives you help all along the way, of course. Uh, so this is where you put in the balances based on your records. So what you have their closing balances being as of 1031. Okay, so I could put in here, well, I had, most of these were the same, right? But I'm going to, so I'm going to copy the balances that it's saying it had here. But there's just a couple things that were different. So we'll say inventory was at 27, 252.79. And we're going to say that construction equipment was at 16,000. Okay. And go on down here and say capital stock was at 1,000. Okay, so a couple quick changes. All right, everything else looked good. These were just a couple things. All right, so first thing uh, we can do here, notice how they do give you the difference. So I can double click on this and see if they pick up anything that was for $700 exactly. So there was nothing that was for $700 exactly that was deleted or changed. Otherwise, it would show up on that report. Um, you can see down here, it totals you, tells you what the difference is between the credits and the debits. Uh, you can see what basis you're looking at this, cash or accrual basis, okay? You can say, I only want to see the accounts with differences, so I click that. These are the accounts with differences here, all right? And then you can either go in, like I said, drill down and see if you can figure out what the differences are and perhaps repost them in the current period, or you can make adjustments. So we're gonna say view suggested adjustments. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna pop up for me a journal entry that I need to create as of the last period so that I get my balances equaled back up to what I as the accountant show them as sh what they should be. Okay, so obviously it won't let us save this because the totals are off. So you have to have a clearing account here for prior year adjustments. Some people have PY adjustments as an equity account. Some people will just put it to retained earnings. Others will put it to an expense account. So it's up to your accountant to tell you where these prior year adjustments that have changed should go. Uh, but what you're essentially doing is truing up your QuickBooks to match what your accountants or what your financials say. Okay, so for now, I'm just going to stick it into retained earnings. Oops, it didn't calculate it out for me. So I want to do 2053. Now that it's totaled, save and close. Okay. Now it does pop up for you automatically. Do you want to reverse this entry or not? So I'm going to go ahead and look at the suggested reversing entry because I might want to, since I'm fixing it last year, obviously something did happen. So I've got to take account for it this year. So I'm going to go ahead and post the reversing entry here. And it just posts the opposite of what I had done in the last journal entry. It adds the entry number with a little R on the end. So I know it's a reversal. It picks up the date as the next day. And I go ahead and say, Save and close. Okay. So then it takes care of those changes in here. Notice how, because we're saying show only accounts with different balances, the only account that has a different balance now is your retained earnings account because we fixed those other, those other three, right? All right, so reclassifying transactions. This is a great way. You can go in and mass reclassify transactions. So right now it's going to pick up for me you know, the date range, uh, accrual or cash basis, view expense accounts, view profit and loss accounts, so income and expense, and view balance sheet accounts. So if I selected, let's see, undeposited funds, vehicles, nothing in this, nothing changed in this period. Let's go ahead back to profit and loss accounts. Okay, so how about construction? 
Nope, no transactions. Okay, let's see, just expense. <laughs> There's some transactions. Okay, sample files, always fun. All right, so let's say these all need to be sent to a certain class because they're all under fuel. So I can check, check, check. Okay, I want to uh, change the account. If I, if I want to change the account on all these, I can. Or if I want to change the class on all these, I can. Send them all to remodel class and say reclassify. Okay, so it's going to take those transactions. And now if I open them up here and look at them, they're going to be under the classroom model. Okay, one way to think about using this that's really great is when you're doing conversions for clients. A lot of times in other softwares, you know, Peachtree and uh, NetSuite, I've seen it. Um, what people do is they'll do fuel and they'll do, do a sub account, fuel. Jer New Jersey, Fuel New York, Fuel Maine, Fuel Chicago, you know, Chicago, <laughs> Illinois. So they'll have they'll have what's their classes as sub items under their expense accounts, right? But then their chart of accounts gets so big because they're going to have Fuel New York, New Jersey, blah blah blah, repairs New York, New Jersey, da, 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 all the way down. So a way to when you do the conversion. You know, you convert everything over, it gets set up that way. Then you can go in, mass reclassify all those New Jerseys to be under the class of New Jersey and then merge the, the accounts. So the New Jersey fuel and then under fuel is New Jersey. You can get rid of that and have it all just merged. So it's just under fuel with the class New Jersey. If you don't understand that, don't worry about it. You'll get it after you go through some of these other videos. Okay. So it's a way to mass reclassify your items or your expenses, okay? You can open the working trial balance here. It's gonna open up, it's gonna show you what, it, what adjusting entries were made during that period. So you can review that. You can also make more adjustments if you want to and print this out, okay? Moving on to the next item, you can review list changes. So do the chart of accounts, has anything changed? Uh, we have a change to the savings account uh, and the the detail of it was that we the data changed, the parent changed, so the original value was checking. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So it looks like what it was saying is that originally it was savings was under checking and we moved it outside of checking, I think. <laughs> Not quite sure of what, what the change was there. I didn't do that one. So then what you do is uh, you can see and mark this as reviewed. So the next time when you come in and do the review, this wouldn't show up there because you've already said, okay, I know what happened here. I'm going to mark this as reviewed. It comes off this list here. Okay. Notice you can do that for items, fixed asset items, payroll items, but we'll get there. All right. So chart of accounts we did, items, same thing here. Door frame was changed uh, to door knobs was changed you know you can see what happened if there was any that were deleted if there were any merged it would show up here uh, the active status of oh here it's telling me what what changed uh, you know it it was active before now it's inactive okay so we're going to mark these as review again i can go back in here and continue down or i can go to fixed asset items payroll items and review all of those changes all right so once those are all marked as changed or reviewed, you can keep notes in here if you want to. So if I add a note, reviewed, don't forget to ask Jane why this is inactive. This savings account is inactive, safe, because it could be an accident, right? So then you keep notes in here. Those notes will stay in here for next time. All right, so then you, you also can have the status. So if you start something and you're not able to finish it in that day or those couple of hours when you're scheduled to work on the close, you can say it's in progress or it's completed. So we're gonna mark this as completed, completed, okay. Other things you can do is you can review the item setup here. So you can see all your service items, all active service items, all right? And you can see all inactive service items if you want to. You can uh, quickly update this list. So I'm gonna say, 
uh, let's say all service items for this, we have a big list. Okay, so I can right click and I can uh, copy this down. I can do a duplicate row. So if I add, needed to add something more, um, I can clear the column if I wanted to clear the column out. So you can do a whole bunch of different things to mass change it. It's similar to what we're used to doing in the uh, edit in Excel, okay? All right, so we can go through and review the items. You can review the customers, any changes in the customer list that you need to make, you can go through, it just kind of helps you schedule that out and also the vendors. Moving down into accounts receivable, you can fix unapplied customer payments and credits. This is a great one to do. So if I click on this here, it's telling me that, for example, this guy has a payment and also has a uh, invoice that these two aren't applied to each other, but they're the same amount and I can apply them. I come in here, apply and save it and those will be marked as paid. All right. I'm going to go ahead and choose, uh, let's see here, let's see vendors, and it, has, it tells me some vendors here. So, for example, I have a bill in here and I have some checks, and I want to see if any of these are applied to each other. So, sometimes you might have a bill and you just accidentally cut the check. You didn't apply it to the bill or do a bill payment. And if you need to apply those two to each other, this is the way to do it. So let's go through, see if there's any in here that we know stand out. No, no. Okay. All right, let's just say, for example, this bill was actually supposed to be applied, or this check, I'm sorry, was actually supposed to be applied to this bill. So we're going to check mark that guy off, check mark this guy off, and say apply. Okay, so now it's going to take the amount available, it's going to drop down to 6250 uh, instead of 7500, and this bill will go away. So it won't be sitting in your accounts payable anymore if I say save. Okay, so it's just a way to mass apply things. I mean, you do have to go through each individual vendor or each individual customer that have open balances, uh, but it's a way to fix those quickly. Clear up the undeposited funds account. If you have a deposit that you made and it's put to a customer, so see here it's received from Christie, but we put it straight to income. And you also have a customer payment in here. So if you made a customer payment, but it's not applied to any invoices, this is a way to go in, take the payment, and apply it to the deposit. Okay, so it gets rid of those two. It should have gone into undeposited funds and then made a deposit from undeposited funds, but we skipped that step on accident, and this is how you fix it. So we say save. Okay. All right. Review your AR aging summary report. That's something you should do every period anyway. Write off your invoices. This is a way to, let's say, all invoices that are late as of 11 1 2015, because this is a demo file. Okay, so these are all the aging invoices. Um, I can say any balance less than $5,000. It's a lot to write off, but let's just pretend. Charges, invoices, finance charges, so you can write off just different things. I can select these guys, choose my write-off account, choose which class it's going to go under, choose the date, preview, and write these off. Okay, so that'll get those invoices uh, quickly put off to bad debt. All right. Thing to think about there is if you truly need to write them off, you might not want to do it that way. If you do track sales tax, that's in another video. Going further down, fix unapplied vendor credits, same as what we showed before with the customer payments. Evaluate and correct 1099 mapping. So look at 1099 mapping, review unpaid bills report, again, AP aging summary. Okay, fix and correctly recorded sales tax. So if you wrote a check to sales tax liability and you didn't go through vendors sales tax, pay sales tax, um, then you can fix that. Adjust sales tax payable, manage sales tax, pay sales tax. So all these are pretty self-explanatory for the accountants there. 
inventory. This is a big one, compare balance sheet and inventory valuation. Right now they add up, this is a sample file. But one of the things to look at is when you have an inventory valuation summary, uh, that report doesn't pick up your inactive items. Okay, so that's a, one reason that there might be a difference. Also, if you have inventory that is uh, going to a balance sheet item, it's not going to show up on these reports, so there's going to be a difference there. Um, and then, of course, you know, there's some adjustments if your inventory's gone negative. There's some weird, wacky things with inventory that we've talked about in other videos. But this is a way to quickly review. Those two reports are the ones that you want to tie out. You want your inventory evaluation summary to tie out to what it says your inventory is on your balance sheet. Okay, troubleshooting inventory problems. It'll come in here so you can see, you can mass adjust these. Do they have a negative quantity? I can come in here and see all of the ones that have a negative quantity. Okay, and there's none with a negative quantity right now. So you can come in here, choose these guys. Uh, you can go ahead and see, um, you know, mass make them inactive. You can just see where, where they're at. Um, it's a good way to review your inventory items, make sure nothing's going negative, um, and mass inactivate things, okay? All righty, so let's go back to inventory here. Adjust the inventory quantity value on hand, so you can go and adjust these. Uh, find incorrectly paid payroll liability, similar to the sales tax one we talked about. I'm just going to show you with this one. So again, if someone goes in and writes a check to the EDD or you know the IRS or whatever you're paying your payroll taxes to, if someone goes in there and just writes a check to it and doesn't do it through the proper procedures of how you're supposed to do in QuickBooks to record payroll liability payments, you can come in here and fix it. So, or at least see what happens. So you click on this, it shows you there was a check written and it went to payroll liabilities, but it didn't go through that right process. So you know you need to go in and uh, go to your employee center and payroll and adjust payroll liabilities, okay? Because you ac actually made that payment. So we gotta get these adjusted down based on what you already paid, okay? Review payroll liabilities, review employee default settings, and enter after the fact payroll if you need to. Um, reconcile your different accounts, review missing checks, set closing date and password, review QuickBooks preferences, all of those things we go over in different videos. And uh, if you're, you're the accountant, you probably know what, what those things mean already, okay? So that's a quick tour of going through the client data review. It's a really great feature. Again, uh, it's a great way to keep track of where you're at and doing a review. It's a great way to let your client and or other staff that's working on this account know where you finished off. Um, if you have several people working on one account, cleaning it up, it's a great way to communicate without having to actually fill someone in on where we're at with the review. It's a neat little feature that QuickBooks offers.